Welcome to the journal paper presentation. This is Navanita Krishnan, pursuing an MPharm, final sum, Department of Pharmaceuticals, Karpan College of Pharmacy, Pharmato. And today we are going to see about the title of Proniosal Transdermal Therapeutic System of Losartan and Potassium Development and Pharmacokinetic Evaluation. So this is an article we are going to see today. So this is an uh, information about this article. And author is an Reena Thakur. And it is published in the name of the journal, Journal of Drug Targeting, and volume is 17 and issue number is 6. So now let's see then introduction about the about the nowadays the most of the drugs are administered through oral route only. So in the oral route, when the drugs are administration through an oral route, it cannot completely get absorbed into the systemic circulations. The biology of the drug, it may be in 50% or 60% or 37% it will be varied due to the various factors of pharmacokinetic factors are affecting the drug absorptions. So the scientific peoples are facing in many problems in the oral route of drug delivery. So to overcome the oral route of the drug delivery, this author is chosen transdermal drug delivery of an losartan potassium by using a novel drug formulations is nothing but neosomes. So these neosomes will penetrate the skin barriers and it will easily reach the systemic circulations. Due to the neosomes have an, it is in consists of in bilayer lipids. So these bilayer lipids will easily cross into the, it's easily cross the skin barriers and it reaches the systemic circulations. So for that reason, this author is chosen neo proneosomes gel formulation and it is uh, applied on dermal. So the delivery of the drug will be easy and it easily crosses the barrier. So in this article, he was chosen in transdermal de delivery for delivery of a losartan potassium, especially for a hypertensive activity. So now let's see then description about the drug. The author is chooses in losartan potassium is in one of the orally active angiotensin 2 receptor antagonist. So other examples are such as an tilmisartan, olmisartan. So these are the uh, angi2 receptor antagonist drugs. It especially used for the treatment of hypertension. Its daily Doses of an losartan potassium is is a only 50 milligram. So when the condition is more severe, then the dose was increased up to 100 milligram. But with the pharmacokinetic parameter of the losartan potassium is let's see, uh, it's a hepatic first pass metabolism is 67 percentage. So the 67 percentage of the drug was metabolized metabolized in the liver and it is very short half-life. The TF is then only two hours. So to overcome these properties, so these are disadvantages, the author is chooses a transdermal drug delivery of these formulations. Now let's see the about what are the materials and methods are used for the preparation of a proneosome gel. Let's see about. So first, for the preparation of a proneosomes, we need the main component is surfactant and another one is a phospholipids to form in bilayer uh, vesicular formation need in phospholipids and organic solvents and other salts. So let's see in this uh, research they use an, uh, various uh, surfactants such as an span 20, span 40, span 60s and span 80 and other than Creams are used. So there is a two types of surfactants with various concentrations is used. And in phospholipids they use in eglisithin and cholesterols. So for in solubility they are using in uh, chloroform, cethanol, propanol, isopropyl alcohol. So these solvents will be used for in especially for solubilities. And other salts such as sodium hydroxide, orthophosphoric acid and potassium dihydrogen orthophosphorus were used for the preparation of in proneosome and gel. Now, let's see the formulation of a proneosome gel by using a certain potassium. So, in this, 
the first step is you want to take an, a wide mouth glass tube should be taken so in this you had a required quantity of an lecithin potassium along with a non ionic surfactant such as an span 20 span 80 twin 20 twin 80 either one of them one surfactant should be added to this add lecithin and egg yolk so these lecithin and egg yolk lecithin and cholesterol sorry lecithin and cholesterol so this is the responsible for the formation of an a bilayer lipid so it should be taken in then one of the glass tubes and this glass tube was warmed in a water bath up to 65 degrees celsius for around 5 minutes so on while heating you all you should add a phosphate buffer at the ph level of 7.4 so it is an isotonic phosphate buffer at the ph level of 7.4 was an added to this mixture and it is continuously warmed for another 2 minutes after complete warming uh, the in the glass tube you can see then proneosomal gel so this is the preparation of in proneosomal gel so in this formulations the author is in formulated seven formulation it's labeled from png1 to png7 in that the drug losartan potassium is taken as in 70 mg is a constant why he should have taken 17 mg means the normal dose of then losartan potassium is 50 mg in that 15 mg 50 mg the 67 percentage of the drug was metabolized in the liver. So remaining 33 percentage is get into a systemic circulation. So, so this 17, this 33 percentage only get uh, gives a therapeutic activity in a hypertensive patient. So that out of 50 milligram, the 17 milligram is a 33 percentage of the drug. So author is taken as a 17 milligram drug for preparation of a proneosome gel for transdermal drug delivery not in oral transdermal drug delivery so for a transdermal drug delivery they choose then 17 milligram of drug so lecithin is in 360 milligram and cholesterol is in 40 milligram should be taken and it is varied in uh, twin surfactants uh, non ionic surfactants is nearly in uh, seven surfactants should be taken in each formation is an uh, each non ionic surfactant will be used used in this preparation Now, let's see the evolution test for the proneosome gel. So, these following are the evolution test for the proneosome gel, such as an, first you should, uh, you should say, uh, see the size and uh, vesicular size and shape through an microscopic evaluations and morphological by using a transmission, electron microscopy should be used and encapsulation efficiency of a drug, it should be, uh, you want to evaluate it and rate of hydration, and in vitro skin permeation by using an animal skin uh, you should be see the in vitro permeation of the drug so after after uh, getting a report of an in vitro permeation studies the transdermal patches were fabricated and uh, next a uh, permeation data analysis and pharmacokinetic evaluations uh, finally a stability series so these are the evaluation tests for a uh, pro neosomer gel for transdermal drug delivery so you should be followed these all the the author is an this author this author is an evaluator these properties all so now let's see the evaluation test by one by one the first evaluation test is a microscopic evaluation uh, in this microscopic evaluation you're going to examine then a shape of then vessels of proneosomal vessels so in this the first step is you should take in a small quantity of in proneosomal gel and it is a disposed in then a 7.4 ml of an isotonic buffer and this disposed solution was in shaken for a few minutes after shaking and it is taken in the glass side so this glass side was an examined under the microscopic uh, especially at 100x magnifications after viewing that you can able to see that a circular uh, vessels is, should be formula formulated so this is an exact structure for the proneosome gel so let's see the size and the size distribution the size of the proneosomal was determined by an a malvin zeta size especially version number 1000 you should be used for it to determine then uh, a size its size range especially about uh, 7 to uh, 20 micrometers in size it should be present and uh, distribution a uh, size distribution was uh, determined by using an uh, light scattering monitors which should be used for a uh, determination of a uh, size distribution morphological characters of so now let's see then 
evolution test for the drug encapsulations. The first step is we should take the required quantity of in a prepared solution was taken in the test tube. And to this add a buffer of pH 7.4 is to be added to the solution. And next uh, you should be sonicated for in a 10 minutes to break the proneosomal gel. After during the sonication uh, the vessel should be get break and the drug which is entrapped into the vessel should be dissolved in the pH pH medium and after sonication the next step is centrifugation in this centrifugation the above solution was taken in the centrifuge centrifugation tube and it is placed in the centrifuges uh, at 25000 rpm for 30 minutes so the vessels and uh, drug should be get splitter the supran liquid is should be the supran liquid is uh, is nothing but in it is in a buffer solution in this buffer solution a drug get dissolved so it is separated from the vessel vesicular particles such as in lecithin cholesterol and other surfactant so it get sedimented the drug and in a buffer solution get uh, present in a supran liquid so now the third step is this supran liquid was removed and it is uh, further diluted with a uh, buffer solution and this solution was then examined under the UV spectroscopic method. So the reason special formula which should be used for in drug encapsulation is nothing but EP is equal to CT minus CER divided by CT. So it is a total concentration and divided by an obtained concentration divided by total concentration into 100. So uh, when the substituting the values in this formulation you should get an encapsulation of drug in the vesicles. Now let's see then in vitro evaluation test for a proneosomal gel. So in this uh, in this study they uh, they taken in k share chain diffusion cells. Uh, this is a study method. In this study method the semi permeable membrane is obtained from the rat abdominal skin and its surface area is 4.52 cm square and 35 ml of a reservoir chamber should be taken. So before uh, taking the uh, rat abdominal the uh, albino rat was in given with an anesthesia and the skin was then extracted from the abdominal region and washed properly and uh, it is uh, stored in then uh, minus 20 degrees celsius for uh, further users so the, sh the skin should be the semi permeable membrane or in a barrier should be taken from the uh, rat abdominal skin only so after cutting the skin from the abdominal area of the rat it should be cut properly in appropriate size and it is mounted on the diffusion cell. So before mounting that, the stratum corneum of the skin should be faced towards the donor compartment and where dermis the face should be uh, faced towards the reservoir compartment. So before mounting that, you should be carefully mounted the skin on the diffusion cell. So after uh, mounting that, the donor compartment was is uh, filled with then is kept with, is kept empty and the receptor compartment was uh, filled with then a phosphate buffer of an pH of 7.4 should be taken in the receptor compartment up to 35 ml should be filled in the receptor compartment so after uh, filling that uh, the uh, receptor compartment should be uh, straight with magnetic motor up to in 50 rpm should be the magnetic motor should be rotated and this apparatus was then uh, maintained with then temperature up to in 37 degrees Celsius. So in every withdrawal, the refresh solution should be uh, replaced in the receptor compartment for every 15 minutes to stabilize the skin. After stabilizing the skin, the negligible UV absorption should be uh, taken after the four hours. And after the four hours, the studies con should be continued with uh, drug. So then, after complete stabilization of the skin, uh, the 17 milligram of in rosatan potassium, that is, is equivalent to one gram of in each formulation should be taken, and it is placed on the donor compartment, and samples will get withdrawn in various concentration. Uh, the membrane, the size of the membrane is 0.545 micrometer, and the drug was analyzed the suitable analytical method. So this is then in vitro evaluation test for then uh, proneosomal gel. So after then 
in vitro drug release studies let's move on to the fabrication of in transdermal patches so especially in the formulation of a transdermal patches the, the author is chooses an png2 formulation because this formulation shows an a very good in vitro drug releases from through in semi papillary membranes of in a rat so in the formulation of a transdermal patches they choose an in uh, two types first one is an uh, transdermal patch contains an hydroxy papillary methicillus and second one is an an a carbopol respiratively so in this the circular uh, aluminum foil diameter is 2.5 cm and adhesive tape is 25 cm squares so uh, after preparing after preparing the aluminum foil and adhesive tapes the internal plastic ring was placed on the aluminum foil to this above on the png2 was spreaded over this area and gel was covered with an liner so this is an formulation of in fabrication of in transdermal patches so now let's see then uh, stability studies in this stability study the drug was in uh, the study was carried up to 45 days at two temperature first one is in room temperature its celsius was in 30 degree a plus or minus 2 degree celsius and refrigerated degree celsius especially a uh, four or in a uh, four plus or minus 2 degree celsius in this studies uh, the optimized transdermal patches especially the hydroxy propyl methyl hpmc hydroxy propyl methyl cellulose Preferred transdermal drug was then taken for this study, and uh, the drug content in these transdermal patches was evaluated for 7, 15, 30, and 45 days by using an HPMC method only used for this study. So, after in these stability studies, after the storage, the proneism uh, transdermal patches were characterized under an suitable analytical method. And now let's say then results and discussion of this work. So first one is the solubility. So in this the drug was well soluble in ethanol and as well as other excipient also freely get soluble in ethanol during the warming. So a suitable uh, solubility organic solvent is ethanol is ethanol is was taken. Uh, next one is the size and shape. As the size and shape of the proneosomal gel was and was determined is. Uh, the circular vessel bodies are determined by using a microscopic uh, examination, and as well as its particle size was uh, obtained from the various ranges from 7 to 19 micrometer. So now let's see then uh, encapsulation and then vessel analysis. In this, especially a PMG2, the formulation, second formulation is in shows in. 85 percentage of a release, or uh, 85 percentage of a drug encapsulation, as well as its size is in only in a seven micrometer, so it is a very small size other formulation than other formulation, and uh, and also it have an uh, encapsulation. The 85 percentage 0.36 when compared to PNG2 and PNG3 is a more or less similar, but when come into a drug encapsulation, the PNG2 is shows in. Uh, small variation so the author is chosen png2 is the best formation and it is uh, converted into a uh, transdermal patches so next one this is in particle size distributions so here excess is the particle size and here is a volume of percentage so in this uh, moreover that the overall range was in the optimal size of the uh, formation is in 10 micrometer should be taken and uh, next one uh, the sample was analyzed in the TIM, so transmission lateral microscopy. So in this range, you can able to see the near circular range of the near circular particles. So this is an proneosomal gel. So this is a bilayer lipid which contains an allosotron drug. So this is a uh, TIM analysis. And now let's see then a dose selection for the transdermal patches. So here in the, the daily requirement is in 50 milligram. Uh, the 25 milligram each twice a day should be given to the patient. So in this, a 67 percentage of the drug was get metabolized in the liver. So the remaining is a 33 percentage. These 33 percentage is only showing a therapeutic drug activity in our body. So that out of 50 milligram, the 17 milligram is an equivalent to the 33 percentage of losartan drug potassium. It was incorporated into the TTS, especially the HPMC patch was taken for this uh, action, and it is used for a 24 hours of duration of action. Now let's see then the permeation of an uh, in vitro skin permeation of the uh, proneosomal gel. So in this especially a PNG2, this is a pink color line. 
so there is a pink uh, the pink color graph is in shows then a png2 which shows in highest release uh, up to 24 hours so this png2 is in get in a nano ionic surfactant especially in a span 40 so this this span 40 formation shows in highest release of in a drug so after in vitro then after in, in vitro studies uh, the png2 was selected for the transdermal fabrication in this transdermal fabrication especially there is a two types i, I have already told that first one consists of in hpmc that is was uh, for in, in the uh, transdermal patches and second one is in consists of in fabapol so when this in vitro skin permeation profile for these transdermal patches were compared in this also especially a png2 is incorporated within hpmc in the transdermal patches which shows them a best release you can able to see up to 24 hours this is a blue color line so this is a shows them a best release than other carbapol and a plain png2 formulations so this is a best formulation the hpn uh, png2 with the hpmc that is nothing but the non ionic surfactant is in span 40 with the hpmc shows the highest release and next one is then is a comparison profile between oral treatment and the transdermal treatment so you can able to see that in, in uh, transdermal patches in oral patches the sudden increase up to 160 milligram per ml serum concentration was a uh, get highest concentration and it is gradually uh, slowly get decreased in the blood there is no control release but when coming to the transdermal you can able to see that so for reaching in highest it takes nearly about eight hours and it is gradually get releases uh, decreases in the serum so when compared to the profile the transdermal patches is an best formation for the uh, targeting delivery of an rosatan potassium so now like comes into the result and discussion the stability study uh, was conducted for 45 days in two different temperature first one is a room temperature and second one is a refrigerator temperature so in both temperature the drug was analyzed there is no uh, various uh, not larger variation in that uh, higher variations in the drug content there is only a small variations so in between the two temperature at uh, seven days you can able to see that that is in 60 milligram of drug is present 60 milligram for 96 and in refrigerator condition is in a 60.99 so from this there is no much difference in the size as well as in a vessel size and the drug content uh, during the storage so you can store at room temperature as well as in uh, refrigerator condition also you can be able to store that so finally we come into the conclusions so on the basis of the uh, research study the higher drug concentrations and maximum encapsulation efficiency bioavailability and the low vessel size so based on these parameters the formulation pnph that is uh, i am already told that there is a second formulation png2 so this formulation is then taken for the fabrication of in transdermal especially with hpmc so hpmc the h indicates the hpmc so the second formulation along with the hpmc transdermal patch wasn't chosen as a best formulation in this study so when coming to the in vitro skin permeation the pngb h is a chosen very good uh, drug release rate than other carbapol or plain png2 okay next one the absorption of in png pnph resulted is a 1.93 fold increases in bioavailability when compared to the market formulation so i am already before itself i showed that is in the oral treatment as well as the transdermal patches the pn the pnph uh, it is treated with an uh, oral uh, marketed formulation in that also uh, the transdermal patches of in uh, proneosomal gel shows them especially hpmc shows them very good release profile so overall this finding indicates that the proneosomal gel formulation is enhanced than skin permeation as well as it increase the bioavailability apart from that the dose level that is in a 50 milligram dose you should be uh, given through oral but when into come into a proneosome the dose level also decreased and uh, 
the proteasome formulation is very easy and expense also the formulation is easy and expense the cost of preparation is also very less so uh, the proteasome gel formulation especially for transdermal drug delivery is a good choice according to all author the proteasome formulation for losartan and potassium is a very good choice they have chosen that's all so thank you very much for your patient listening if any queries or any other valuable suggestion is done please mention in the comment box so again thank you very much thank you